So all together we've got 58 games, 11 consoles, and there's also a box that landed under the PO box and I have no idea what's inside. This is going to be the biggest pickups video of 2020 so far. Anyways, before we get stuck into what is pretty much going to be the biggest pickups video of 2020, I can imagine, or at least the most ridiculous, I want to remind everyone that I stream on Twitch every Tuesday and Saturday where we just hang out and play some games together, we just play some Minecraft, we just play some multiplayer games, just loads of fun. And also, if you like Xbox videos, please consider getting subscribed to the channel. Anyways, let's get tore into the pickups. So, pretty much the whole world at the moment is in quarantine and that kind of puts a dampener on collecting for video games, rightly so, because you really shouldn't be outside side running around stuff in three video games. However, that doesn't mean that eBay can't be used safely to still keep your collecting going while we're all still kind of locked up. Just a word of warning before we start, if you do go and you are buying stuff at the moment on eBay, treat it as if it's any other surface that you share with anyone else. Clean it super thoroughly whenever it lands on. Wash your hands after you open any parcels that you get on. I mean, we all love game collecting, but the one thing I love more is being safe. So yeah, make smart decisions. So, um, <laughs> and honestly, I'm just kind of looking around me at this mass of electronics and I have no idea where to start so I'm gonna throw all the rules out the window I usually try and go from like oldest to newest and all that other stuff and I'm pretty much just gonna grab at things and just start showing them off to everyone so yeah we'll start uh, over here at the on other stuff on the floor look it's everywhere so the first bundle that I managed to pick up was an NES bundle now as with most NESs that you will find the 72 pin connector on this is completely shot however I have a spare one lying around I bought a bunch of them and it means that I can just replace this one and it should work fine and as well as that it came with a bunch of games so the first game that it came with was Dr. Mario I absolutely love Dr. Mario it's a really cool little puzzle game I think it got like a mobile game release recently but it wasn't that good or something Dr. Mario World or something I don't know anyways the second one is the classic Super Mario 3 not much needs to be said about it this has a place in the video game hall of fame if I'm not mistaken next is oh it's in a little slip case next is Alien 3 I have never played the Alien 3 game it is made by LJN, so I have no idea if that's going to be a good thing or a bad thing. But yeah, I'll probably end up giving this a go at some point. It's the one that I think I'm looking forward to playing the most out of all these games that are here. The next one is Wizards and Warriors 3. I have no idea what this game is. It's made by Acclaim. I know nothing about it. I need to really brush up on my like NES games. I know like the main ones and I know the ones that I played when I was younger and I know the ones that my friends had, but I just, I don't know. I've never seen this before, but I will give it a go. And last but not least is the LJN Classic Terminator 2. Again, it's an LJN game, so I don't know how much uh, of a testament that that is to its quality. However, yeah. Terminator. So again, starting from my left and sweeping around to my right, I have a stack of just miscellaneous games here. These are probably the newer released games that we have here. The first one is Animal Crossing uh, New Horizons. Now, this actually isn't my copy. Um, this is Tash's copy. Uh, Tash pre-ordered hers with a regular normal retailer and I ordered mine online but unfortunately all the quarantine stuff happened and my copy just never arrived. I have no idea where it is. It's been like over a week since this game came out and I don't know where my Animal Crossing is. Unfortunately as well it's only like one save per console so I still haven't actually got a chance to play it. I don't know if popping this into my Switch and starting a game would like wreck Tash's games, I don't know, I don't want to chance it, uh, so yeah, there's a copy in the house, but it's not my copy and I can't play it, that kind of sucks, but it doesn't really matter that much because also on the same day, or actually the day before, I picked up Doom Eternal, anyone that's listening to me talk at all over the past like two weeks has known that I've just been ranting and raving about Doom Eternal, we did a live stream of it, I did a video where I was playing Doom 2016 in preparation of this game coming out, anytime you see me online you'll probably see me trying to 100% this game, I absolutely love it, it is my game of the year so far i love it so much it is everything that i wanted it to be and so so much more so yeah pick up doom eternal it is so worth it and you will thank me the next game that i picked up was yoku's island express it was on sale it's still sailed i've I haven't got around to playing it yet, uh, but yeah, it's uh, it was on sale at a local retailer. It was on clearance uh, alongside Trials Rising. Now I loved Trials HD. I loved Trials, the other ones. I can't remember what they're called. So, I mean, it's a Trials game, and not only that, but it's the Gold Edition, which includes the Expansion Pass, which means I don't have to do the Ubisoft thing of buying every single track and all that other stuff. I can just dive in, enter in all the little codes that are inside the box, and just play Trials whenever I'm feeling up to it. But yeah, Trials games are really frustrating, but really rewarding. It's one of those games that you do not question the game at all. You just question your skill whenever you can't, like, beat a level. But it's so good. It's just perfect, like, arcade-style gameplay. Uh, consider picking up Trials. If you want to just put your head through 
your wall and have fun while doing so. And the next game, oh my goodness, this game needs no introduction, so I shall not give it much of one. But I finally picked up Fallout 76, and I can say without a shadow of a doubt, it is trash. <laughs> My goodness, I'm gonna I'm gonna give like a tiny like one minute like monologue slash rant on Fallout 76. All joking aside, the game itself on the surface does not seem that bad. Whenever you start, it seems like a Fallout game that's like the worst of the Fallout games, but still not that bad. But the more you get into it, the more you realize that like, hey, there's actually nothing to do. It's like being given lots of tools, but no materials to use the tools on. You have all this possibility sitting before you, but absolutely nothing to do with it. So. I didn't run into many glitches, I did run into a few bugs here and there, but they were mostly like texture pop and things like that. It was relatively stable for me. Now, in saying that, this video is being recorded pre-Wastelanders. I don't know if Wastelanders is going to completely overhaul it and finally make this the game that it should be. But at the moment, pre-Wastelanders, I would not recommend this unless it's super cheap and you're buying it just in case the price goes up when Wastelanders comes out. Uh, to be fair, that's kind of the only reason I picked it up. It comes with 500 atoms, which I, why the, the atom store? is just complete rubbish. Uh, the game itself, as I say, the combat is Fallout style combat. Now, a lot of people didn't like the VATS system because it was real time, but I played Fallout 4 without using VATS at all. I just played it as a first person shooter. And so it didn't really affect me that much that VATS was rubbish because I haven't used VATS since Fallout New Vegas. Yeah, d uh, bleh. And the last game in this little stack is Grand Theft Auto 5. It seems like every pickup's video, I always have another copy of Grand Theft Auto 5, but that's because people keep giving me copies of Grand Theft Auto 5. But this one is slightly different. This was a game that was thrown in along with a bundle that I ended up picking up. And what I got along with this was an Xbox 360 E model. This is the second E model that I own. It is much cleaner than the first one. So I think that this is going to be my Xbox that I'm going to do all of my recording on from now on. Usually when I record Xbox 360, 60 games that aren't backwards compatible for the channel I use an Xbox 360e because I in my experience it tends to be the quietest so because this one is just in nicer condition than the other e that I've got this is probably going to be my main YouTube Xbox 360 and the other one will become my backup YouTube Xbox 360 if that makes sense well this is a real first world game setup but yeah it's just another Xbox added to the collection we're like really starting to beef out this console collection now and moving on round the clockwise direction of my desk we move on to another bundle that i came across of nintendo 64 games the first of which being blast core i got, had a got a land of this off a friend when i was younger and i popped it on and i absolutely loved it but i never got to finish it so i will eventually sit down and play this and try and finish it and hopefully it remains as good in real life as it does in my head currently second game that was on there was mischief makers i have no idea about anything about this game i don't know what the story is i don't know what type of game it is for all i know it's could be a backwards upside down RPG cart racer. If anyone thinks it's any good or thinks it's rubbish or there's any stories about Mischief Makers, let me know down in the comments. The next game is Pilot Wings 64. I, do you know what? I actually spoke to some people that said they didn't like this game and I was like, wow, I didn't think I could lose friends so fast. This game is actually really good and I really enjoy it. I don't know what it is about little flying some games where you have to like perform loads of challenges or something. It, it, it's hard to describe. Pilot Wings is one of them games that's really hard to sell to people whenever you describe what it is, but when anyone I know anyway that sits and plays it, bar like a few people, I thought it was great. The SNES version was good. I actually think the N64 version was better. It was a launch title as well, so you know, expected to be quite reserved in some areas. Yeah, folks, was really good. The next game that was in this bundle is TG Rally 2 because this is the N64 and it wouldn't be a console without racing games. N64 had a lot of racing games and this was just another one, so I'm not really expecting me to have a good time at all unless this is anything different about it. I'd probably not play this, to be fair. It just came with a bundle. It'll probably just sit on my shelf or something. Let me know if it's any good, if you think it's any good, if you've played it before, if you've got any nice fond childhood memories of it. Another game that I would like people to let me know if it's any good or not was made by Argonaut, which is Buck Bumble. Now, Argonaut are the people who made Star Fox or over here, Lilat Wars or any of the other Star Foxy games that have different names all over the world for some reason. But yeah, this is made by Argonaut, published by U Ubisoft. I can't say that. Every time I try to say Ubisoft, I'd be sick of it. But yeah, Buck Bumble. It sounds, it's a fun name to say. Buck Bumble, Buck Bumble, Buck Bumble. Actually, it's really hard to say when you say it like more than twice. But yeah, let me know if it's any good. Again, I know nothing about it, but I know a lot about this next game, which is F-Zero X. I loved this game when I was younger. There's something about a game that allows an 11 year old to go 500 miles an hour that just <coughs> oh, that's a bad sign. 
But yeah, this game is all about speed. It's all about ridiculous courses. It's all about super fast cars. It's so good. It's like, well, it's F-Zero. Everybody knows what F-Zero is, like space racer type game. So good. If you have an N64 pick this up, I would classify this as being an essential N64 purchase. The next one, speaking of racing games, because again, it's N64, you can't move for racing games, is Star Wars Episode One Racer. Now, the first time I played this game, I thought it was awful. I'm not a fan of Star Wars at all. And I was just like, oh, I, I'll, I'll try it. I think someone gave me a land of it and said you gotta play this game i was like all right fine and it was okay like i was like as man special and then i realized that a week had passed and i hadn't stopped playing yet and it is actually unbelievably good now i haven't played it in years so i might be a bit off whenever i say that there's something about upgrading your car and for some reason the way that they've done the upgrade path in this game is like really really satisfyingly addictive and so i just found myself wanting to upgrade to like the max level pod racer and just fly about all the wee tracks and stuff but yeah i would pick this up well, maybe not this version. I hear that the Dreamcast version is probably better than the N64 version. But if you haven't got a Dreamcast, I picked this up as well. I played it and I thought it was great. So yeah. And the next 360 game that I've got is 1080 Snowboarding. I, it was one of those games that for some reason everybody talks about, but I don't know, it didn't really catch me that much when I played it, but I didn't hate it. So I would still recommend it to people as like, yeah, if you find it and it's super cheap, pick it up. I mean, you know, even if you get like a night out of it, then I suppose it's not that bad. But yeah, it's not that expensive. It's, it's an okay game. I would give it a go. And anyways, on to the next games for me. 64 the next games are all boxed, and I, I think boxed N64 games just, oh, that, there's nothing that brings back more nostalgia to me, the boxed N64 games. So the first N64 game that's boxed here is Turok 2 Seeds of Evil. Now, all of these boxed games, there's four of them, they all come with uh, the manuals and everything inside, so I'm super happy that I managed to get these complete. Now, in saying that, the Turok 2 box definitely has seen better days. There are a few little rips. The structural integrity is pretty much gone, uh, so you can can't really stack much on top of it but I mean it wasn't that expensive overall this bundle I can't remember what I paid for it but it definitely was way less than whatever thing was worth individually wow I just noticed that all the screenshots on the back of the box are like super high res screenshots at the bottom someone took their screenshots direct from their silicon graphics workstation the next box is probably in slightly worse condition this box has been repaired there's like the next game is Beetle Adventure Racing which was made by Electronic Arts uh, again it's an N64 racing game this one still has a bit of its structure integrity oh look it's got a price tag apparently this game was pre-owned from game scene for 4.99 there's something about like pre-owned stickers and price stickers on old games that are just loads of fun i will definitely leave that on there i'm one of those people that like really loves the old weird price stickers the next boxed game that is here is GoldenEye 007. Now this one goes without saying, it is a classic shooter, another one of those essential N64 purchases. This is a game that strictly didn't come boxed. I had the box already, but I didn't have a game to put on it. I had the manual and everything. And now I finally managed to put everything together and do like one nice little package, which is just super awesome. I'm dead happy now that I finally have like a lovely all in box set of GoldenEye. The next one, which is also an N64 essential purchase and also the crispiest most pristine lovely box that i've seen in years for the n64 is perfect dark this box is an absolute mint shape there is not a mark or a crease or anything on this it is so beautiful it's got the manual inside the manual has absolutely no creases on it whatsoever i got the game put inside um, again this is another box i had that i had to put a game on game is super clean i'm just so happy that i have like this lovely pivotal n64 game in such a condition that i'm like really proud of mm so good anyways let's move on to the next bundle so the next bundle that i've got here is a game boy color bundle so this is a fully working game boy color i managed to get as part of a little bundle now originally when i bought it it came with no backing however you can buy the game boy color battery packs on ebay for next to nothing so it's kind of nice that i'm able to like put together like a full little game boy color again um the best thing is is that if you do buy them without the battery backs they tend to be a bit cheaper you usually save more by buying one without a battery battery back and then buying a battery back later if that makes sense so that works out kind of nice but it came along with five games and the five games it came along with are 3d pocket pool that has like a few little rips on the uh, label if this camera would work with me instead of against me today the next game is disney's tarzan which against disney game i i haven't played it at all however in saying that whenever i put this on it has a really really impressive opening cinematic for the game boy color i'm surprised they were able to fit that on there well done 
Activision, Disney Interactive people who made this game. The next game is Tennis. It's just one of those Game Boy games that like everybody has. I'm sure if you like dug down the back of the couch, you'll probably find a copy of this thing in there. The next one is Aladdin. Uh, clearly the person who owned this was a Disney fan. And the last game, which comes in one of those little cases that always hurt my fingers, is Dragon Warrior Monsters. I'm actually gonna hold that up and hopefully it'll focus. Good boy. But yeah, this is a game that was made by Enix. Not Square Enix, but Enix before Square came along and they did that Let's Be One Company thing. But yeah, this is one that I uh, actually locked up online and saw that it had some pretty favorable reviews. So I may sit down and actually play this. Just can't chill out and Game Boy in bed. But either way, anyway, that's the Game Boy Color Bundle. Wow. We are about halfway through and oh my goodness, that I don't know how I'm going to get through this next part. It's so mad. Anyways, let's keep on moving. There's a stack of games here and oh, this is so, so good. So the first game on this Dreamcast bundle is Sega Rally Championship. Um, I never played this, but as far as I know, the racing games on the Dreamcast were pretty good. Uh, the next game is UEFA Striker. It's a football sports game, which is not really my cup of tea, but it's some classic football games are really good. I'm pretty sure that some of the World Cup FIFA games, like World Cup 94, were pretty good. Uh, and some of the early arcade style ones were also pretty good. Next one is Jet Set Radio. Jet Jet Set Radio is one of those games that like it's like a poster child for the Dreamcast so if you are buying a Dreamcast at some point I would definitely uh, recommend picking this up. It's just one of those classic games that everybody just seems to really enjoy. Uh, the next game is a game called Incoming which I have no idea what it is. The cover has like a space shuttle launching. There's also some sell -a tip here for some reason even though nothing is broken. The back of the box says they're here fight against alien intervention with the finest in land sea and air combat craft the ultimate ultimate the multiple vehicle shoot them up next game from our dreamcast bundle is resident evil code veronica so these came out on both the playstation and the dreamcast but I would definitely recommend that if you can to pick up the Dreamcast versions rather than the PlayStation versions because as far as I'm aware whenever you grab like a VGA cable for your Dreamcast and you play on VGA mode these games look unbelievable. I actually play Resident Evil 2 on the Dreamcast rather than the PlayStation because it just looks that much better. But yeah there's not really much to be said it's a classic Resident Evil game if you like classic Resident Evil games then chances are you're going to have a good time with Code Veronica. The next game I have has no case it just sort got thrown on along with a bundle which was UEFA Dream Soccer okay the next game that got thrown on as well because they were like I found a bunch of games lying around do you want them and I was like oh yeah uh, was Sonic Adventure uh, which again is one of those classic games for the Dreamcast that everybody just seems to really enjoy it was as far as I'm aware it was the first true 3d Sonic game and I actually thought it was okay it had some camera problems and things but it's not enough that you can't forgive it for the time in which it came out anyways the next game that's on our list is Sonic Adventure one of those classic games for the Dreamcast and the next game on our list is Sonic Adventure, one of those classic games for the Dreamcast. I don't know why they sent me three copies of Sonic Adventure, but here we are. I already had Sonic Adventure, so this is actually copy number two, three, and four. So, yeah, uh, no idea why there's so many Sonic Adventures in my house right now, but, you know, first word problems, I suppose. Next game is Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Um, a lot of people write these... What? So someone paid £11 for this? Uh, no. So yeah, a lot of people write these games off as being like, you know, these crappy quiz games or whatever. I don't like quiz games, they're just like fodder. And some people buy them because they're so cheap and just use them as case replacements, which again, good idea if there's a game at like £2 and it's got a really nice case and you've got a game at £40 that has a crap case, like do we swap a Rooney and you're all sorted. But I actually don't mind these old quiz games, especially because they usually contain a lot of general knowledge from a certain time period as well, which can add its own bit of charm. These are so much fun if you have friends over. If you're just sitting, you don't want to play anything super intense. Maybe everybody's just sitting around just having a bit of a laugh and uh it's like the i would definitely recommend busting out games like this everyone can have a good time it's kind of got the same appeal as buzz where everybody can like just make fun of each other for not knowing like sample stuff or like be really impressed that people know really obscure stuff but yeah i recommend picking up quiz games they're super cheap and the amount of fun that you'll get out of them with friends is way worth the like two pound that you'll pick them up for next game is choo choo rocket again this is one of these games that is super cheap i am not even it's so cheap that I, what happened there it's so cheap that I'm pretty much convinced that this was a bundle copy at some point. I would uh, recommend this to anyone. It's one of those little puzzle games that just is so much fun. You uh, move little mice around like a a maze and there's like they keep going and turn at certain tiles and it's just one of those puzzle games that you have to sit really think about it has the same appeal as some mobile games nowadays in fact i'm pretty sure that choo choo rocket even got a mobile release in recent 
ish years. But yeah, Choo Choo Rocket, you, if you have a Dreamcast and you're keeping an eye out for Dreamcast games, you will definitely come across this at some point. And I would say, don't be fooled by the fact that it's super cheap and sit down and play it. You'll have loads of fun. Next game is Shadow Man. Now, this is a game that I have to admit that I know absolutely nothing about. I have it on N64 as well, and now I have it on Dreamcast, and I've no idea what it's about. Uh, it says he is coming, stalking criminals in a spirit world and real world. A possessed man is coming, a voodoo mask in his chest, and lines of power in The game sounds awesome. Shadow Man is coming, trailing evil from live side to dead side to stop an apocalypse to save your soul. Man, that sounds awesome. Um, yeah, I think I'll give this a go. Uh, I don't know if it's VGA compatible, but again, that's the draw for me of Dreamcast games is the fact that they are VGA compatible and usually are they look better but uh yeah shadow man man that was a bit of a bit of a swerve there wasn't it and the last game that i have here for the dreamcast is msr metropolis street racer it's a racing game i don't know much about it it looks like it's fast cars uh nighttime city locations enter a new age of driving i i will consider it so anyways on to the next bundle so we really are getting into the meat of things now before we get to our mystery box that was sent in oh my goodness i just can't wait to rip into this thing so excited but before we get to that let's move on to the next bundle so i'll show off this one first um it came with a car power supply as well just so i'll move that out of the road right now but yeah i got a playstation 2 in like this lovely carrying case but that's not the reason why i bought it i ended up picking up the playstation 2 because one it was super cheap so like i'm really really happy to be picking up a console that's like really really cheap i already had a ps2 but i definitely didn't mind picking this one up for one simple reason and that's because it came with this like third party LCD screen. This came from a time when people were hooking up their consoles to CRT TVs. So to have like a little LCD screen, which by the way has absolutely no marks on it whatsoever, that's pretty cool. It's like a little PlayStation 2 laptop. Um, it's got pass through on the back for all of like the video out, so you don't even have to take this off if you want to connect it back up to a TV. But this thing plays, as far as I'm aware, in composite out. It also has two headphone jacks if people want to watch DVDs together, and it also has the car adapter so that I can like have it in the car and not play it in the car because I'm usually too busy driving to play PlayStation 2 games but yeah this is pretty cool I just I can't believe that something like this existed for the PlayStation 2 I know that there were some LCD screens for the PlayStation 1 but this one looks so good but yeah PlayStation 2 laptops aside let's move on to the next console bundle that we've got here getting into some really juicy stuff now so the next bundle that I ended up picking up was a Mega Drive bundle or a Genesis bundle if you love in the United States uh, but but the two games that came along with it were World Class Leaderboard and FIFA 95. Nothing too exciting. However, the reason why that I ended up picking this bundle up was because it came with not one, not two, not three, not four, but five working Mega Drives for about the price you would pay for one Mega Drive. I do not need all of these Mega Drives. They all work. I have no idea why that I spent relatively little money on five Mega Drives in two games, but you know, a quarantine will do this to you, I suppose. But yeah, it comes with like all of the controllers, it comes with all of the, the cables, and uh, yeah, why? I have two already, so this is seven Mega Drives that's in my house now. So yeah, more than likely these will be getting either traded or sold because no one needs seven Mega Drives. Also, just for anybody that's asking about the two like Model 1 Mega Drives that are here, one of them is the like high definition graphics stereo sound um, Mega Drive and the other one isn't, so it's nice to kind of have like both of them the 16-bit logo isn't uh, shiny it it has I'm assuming that that has worn off or something I have one that has the high definition graphics thing along the top and the 16-bit logo is shiny I don't really know much about different models of Mega Drive but I'm always told that if you are picking up a model one to grab the high definition bloody bloody well one and plus as well because Sega CDs weren't so common here or Mega CDs as they're called here all of the little drive bays are also on them as well which is kind of nice anyways on to the next bundle so the last bundle before we get to this lovely mystery box that sensei sent me from the discord thank you so much sensei oh my god this is so good is an, an xbox 360 bundle i suppose it's only poetic that i end my bundle run with xbox 360 stuff so what i ended up picking up was uh, a elite model xbox 360 now this has been upgraded to some of the newer dashboards but uh yeah uh, i didn't actually own an elite model xbox so it's pretty cool to um, finally have one. Um, the difference between these and the other 
Xboxes that are out there uh, is that it has a black hard drive on the top. That's about it. Um, at the time it came out, it was the first Xbox to have a HDMI port, but then any subsequent Xbox that was released after this, so the 60 gig model and I think some of the later 120 gig models, um, had a HDMI port on it and then after this then came the slum and the rest is history. So yeah, it's nice to finally have an Elite. Also, as well as the Elite console, uh, there was also a shiny slum that is here. I do not like the shiny slums at all. I like the matte ones. Now, the difference between the the matte one and the shiny one is that again obviously the finish is shiny but also it has like a silver trim like a shiny trim around it so this thing just attracts fingerprints it attracts scratches it i think it looks awful i would much rather have the matte version now the difference is is whenever these launched the shiny one was a 250 gig model it had the hard drive built in and the matte model was only a four gigabyte internal storage one that didn't have a hard drive so what i ended up doing was buying the four gig one and buying a separate 250 gig hard drive so that i had the best of both worlds i had a console that looked really good and also had enough internal storage to like install everything i wanted to install but anyways these consoles also came with a stack of games and a controller so these consoles came with their controllers power supplies everything they all work fine um and he also threw in an extra controller as well because he found it lying around and he was a really really nice guy it was one of the rock candy like third party uh xbox 360 controllers but if you ever come across one of these they are like see-through colorful controllers they're really really nice looking but they are also really comfortable they are super clicky responsive they feel really 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 nice so if you want a really nice third party controller, I would definitely recommend trying to pick up a Rock Candy. Now, it doesn't have vibrate in there. However, um, from what I can see, it does have space for the vibration motors. So I don't know if there's maybe headers that you can fit the motors onto or something. I don't know, but maybe you could mod it. I don't know. But yeah, it's nice. It's a nice little blue controller that looks really, really good. So onto the stack of games that came with this lovely bundle. There is Far Cry 2 Classics Edition. Um, I already had this normally, but again, because it's classic, it's one of the green box classics. I will keep it because I'm trying to build up my little classic set as well. I really like the classics and uh, yeah, Far Cry 2. Next one is Sega Superstar Tennis. One of those games that is just, oh, this is a bundle copy, not for resale. I never saw that before. Oh, class. So yeah, this is like a little bundle copy. I have no idea what this came with. It's just a lot of Sega stars playing tennis together. I'm assuming that this was in response to how popular uh, the tennis game was on the Wii. Next game that was in there was Bulletstorm Epic Edition. So I already had Bulletstorm, but this one had a separate cover. It's all lovely and shiny. And uh, yeah, it's the Epic Edition of Bulletstorm. Uh, so this, I'm assuming, comes with extra stuff. It includes additional content and multiplayer experience point bonus. Plus, receive guaranteed early access to the Gears of War 3 beta. I think that that's probably expired by now. Who knows? Next game is FIFA 15. It's a sports game. Next game is PES 2012. Also a sports game. Uh, next game was Connect Star Wars. Now, anyone that uh, sees Connect Star Wars out there, um, something that I completely forgot to mention anytime I've talked about this game before, make sure to double check that this game has two discs. A lot of people always forget that Connect Star Wars has two discs. There is the first one, which is the actual Connect game. And the second one is a, a load of game demos for the Connect. If you only have one disc in there like the connect star wars one ask whoever it is that's going to get this to double check for the next disc comes with the manual comes with the little smiley face card that always makes me happy every time i open my game case and see it smiling at me but yeah uh just a note definitely check that there are two discs in your connect star wars next is beijing 2008 it's an athletics game which surprisingly can be fun in multiplayer so uh yeah give them a go i suppose then batman arkham asylum batman arkham asylum is uh uh, one of those games that was super critically acclaimed whenever it came out. It's loads of fun. It was the first in, I think, a trilogy, and uh, they're loads of fun. So, yeah, this is obviously the logical starting point. Plus, it's super cheap for a really, really good Batman game. Next game on the list is Born Conspiracy. Now, as far as I know, this is a, either a tie in to a movie or just an add on to the movie series, but I know nothing about Born. I've never seen any of the films, I don't know anything about it whatsoever. But uh, yeah, it looks like one of those really weird graphics plasticine Xbox 360 games. Yeah, who knows? Might be good. It looks to me like a kind of a Max Payne splinter cell type thing. I don't know. Next one is Battlefield 3. Again, I already had this, but I'm keeping it because this is the limited edition physical warfare pack. I don't set out to buy like 
any of the different variations of, of games because you'll be here for the rest of your life trying to find all the different variations but if I come across one just by happen chance I will just put it on the shelf anyway and keep it and I don't track them like I don't track that I have this weird edition and I don't have that one it's just one of those things that if I come across it I'll just put it on the shelf and just be like oh that's pretty cool but uh, the limited edition physical warfare pack comes with a gun a gun a, a, some ammo why uh, a flash suppressor and an expansion pack back to Kirk end don't know what that means but yeah uh, I don't even know if any of that stuff would be valid nowadays um, it looks to me as though the discs themselves say limited edition on them so I'm assuming that this content is on the disc it I don't actually have like a code inside there that's for this or whatever but yeah um just something to note if you're picking up battlefield games next one is the call of duty 4 modern warfare game of the year edition again i already had this but because it is the game of the year like different one i just decided to keep it uh, as far as i know this one though is a code inside of the box that has all of the extra content so if you do buy this it just keep in mind that it has a code it may already be used so just again proceed with caution if you find this uh, over the regular version next one is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. Um, as far as I'm aware, I already had this, so this will probably be going straight into my doubles pile. Next was Mortal Kombat. I did not own this. I played it before. I think I used to own it, but traded it like years and years and years ago, back whenever I was in college. Doesn't have the manual, but in saying that, I don't really mind. It was a really good Mortal Kombat game. It was a, a nice return to form for Netherrealm, who uh, I, I'm pretty sure went out of business and then got like bought up by Warner Brothers. And then this was the first game under their new Netherrealm banner. But yeah, next game was Sleeping Dogs. I already owned it, but it turned out that I owned this the other way around. I owned the like special edition version, but not the regular one. So now I've got both and they both sit beside each other on the shelf. And the next one is Medal of Honor. Again, this one was backwards. I owned the Medal of Honor like tier one edition, but not the original one, I think. Uh, but now, they're both on the shelf either way they're both there now so after all of those mega bundles it is time to figure out what's in the box what's in the box so we're going to pull out my trusty little swiss army knife that i'm always afraid of because i don't want to cut myself and we're gonna open this bad boy and see exactly what's inside. Now, um, a funny story about this parcel. Sensei sent me this parcel and asked me on the Discord like what my address was and all that stuff. So uh, I gave him the PO box address, everything was fine. And for some reason, instead of sending this box to Ireland, the US Postal Service sent it to Israel. So uh, yeah, this box has quite literally been around the world. It's taken about three months to get to me by the time they realized their mistake. But uh, yeah, uh, I suppose better late than never. So there we are put this away because again make smart choices gotta be safe and inside the box is another box i'm gonna double check that this has no like identifying information on it before i get properly stuck on so looking at the box sensei has left me instructions to open this side up i will definitely do that sensei and i will brave opening this knife for a second time Ugh. so it seems on top of everything there is a little note which i will double check it says hey harry happy late christmas <laughs> thank you u.s postal service for that lovely gem it says happy late christmas i wanted to get this there by then but i had to wait for some stuff to show up to complete the package anyways i hope you enjoy it keep up the great work sensei thank you so much sensei this I cannot explain how much that this means to me. Thank you so much, my friend. And I just, oh, I can't wait to get inside and see what's, what's inside this lovely parcel. So first things first, inside here is, da, 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 da. we have some Atari characters. Hey, there's Atari Pac-Man and Atari Donkey Kong. The funny thing about Pac-Man is, is that I, I have a boxed Atari. Um, I found a box that Atari locally that it, it was one of those ones that had the sticker on the front that says includes Pac-Man cartridge but it doesn't actually come with the Pac-Man cartridge so this now completes my uh my boxed Atari that I have in the other room like my Pac-Man edition and the next game here is Donkey Kong as well which comes in this lovely little like tea colored cart but yeah this is pretty cool it's uh, I have a ColecoVision Donkey Kong as well I have no idea where it came from uh because I don't own a ColecoVision nor have I ever seen one in real life I don't even think we had it over here but for some reason I have a ColecoVision Donkey Kong, but now it's nice I have an Atari Donkey Kong, which uh, is just loads of fun. Next parcel here seems to be other Atari games. Yeah, this is so cool. There's combat, 
which very famously uh, was uh, all over the um, Angry Video Game Nerd and Space Invaders. Uh, I really, really, really love these like super plain looking Atari cartridges. There's just something about the fact that they tr they didn't try to be flashy at all and just had like really, really plain like game cards. There's just something about that that's just really cool. But again, thank you so much. That's that's amazing. On to the next little mini parcel that's inside here. We have bowling another like one of those really cool little like atari cards that i just love so much and video pinball right here's the thing i absolutely love pinball games i don't know what it is about pinball games but there's just something that just i don't know it just makes me really happy i just really like pinball games so having like an old school like atari pinball game is really cool i will definitely be hooking up the atari this afternoon and like having some super old school crt atari action so on to the next parcel i don't think i'm not sure what's on here if this is atari games as well or if it's it, it feels like it anyway but i'll pull out the first game which is parker brothers oh i can't re oh i remember now uh sensei told me that there was a game without a label and i can't remember what it was but i will look up our conversation and if i remember i'll put it at the bottom of the screen if not i'll just be pointing down here like an idiot for no reason and the next game is <gasps> oh my goodness you absolute mad lad i am actually shocked sonic the hedgehog 2 sealed for the game gear i have not seen a game gear box in forever i absolutely love the game gear it's just one of those things sega like the master system game gear all that stuff sega was absolutely huge here in some circles it was bigger than the nes you were either a sega boy or you were uh, an nes boy i was kind of in the middle i was lucky enough that i was able to um get both but um yeah the game gear was one of those systems i just i, I got a game gear for my sixth birthday and i absolutely loved it but i never had some for it i remember being told that there were sonic games for it but i never ever got one. Oh my goodness i'm so happy the first thing that i'm going to do is i'm gonna go and buy this on ebay like buy sonic the hedgehog 2 on ebay for game gear and i'm just gonna keep this one in the box as a present from sensei oh my goodness my friend thank you so much this is just the coolest thing ever and it seems that there's some 360 games down here as well so we're gonna dive in and have a nosy oh my god <laughs> I wanted these games so much. I can't believe that these are on this box. Oh, I'm so happy. Thank you so much, Sensei. This is so cool. Sensei uh, got me the um, the all the Burger King games. There is uh, Big Bumpin', which is the coolest name for a game ever. Uh, Sneak King uh, and the uh, the ever famous Pocket Bike Racer. Um, the good thing is, is that I have a Reset Glitch Hack Xbox 360. Um, as far as I'm aware, these are region locked, the NTSC. However, I will actually be able to play these on uh, on, a, on a 360. You know, I'll actually be able to play these games, which is nice. But oh my goodness, this is the coolest thing ever. I am so happy. They, it just, they're so cool. Oh, I, 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 I can't, I can't even put on the words how amazing that this bundle is thank you so much sensei thank you thank you my friend this is the coolest thing i've ever seen i'm so happy you've definitely made my day week month year and career thank you so much my friend anyways uh if you would like to send any bundles on and have them opened on uh on pickup videos then the po box is down in the description um also you can drop me a message on discord uh if you have anything that you know you'd be wanting to see me open on camera i don't know but yeah uh thank you so much again to sensei for sending these across thank you so much for watching uh thank you for everybody that came to the live stream yesterday and heard me uh, talk at length about video game pickups and stuff so uh yeah thank you so much as a reminder as i said at the start of this video i stream every tuesday and saturday over on twitch all the links are down in the description um i also uh, put up videos here all the time on xbox 360 so if you'd like xbox 360 videos xbox videos all that type of stuff then consider getting subscribed to the channel so yeah thanks for watching and i'll see you guys next time